Today we're going to be looking at Color Lux in the color Rose Gold. So I like to just start my videos out by saying that even though my swatches are labeled 1 through 12, I just want to remind everyone that that is not synonymous with hair levels. I do different video clips and pictures and such throughout the video, so the numbers just help us keep track of each swatch. These are human hair swatches, but they are not virgin hair, so they've been chemically colored, bleached, or treated at some point in their existences. The number one swatch is a green. Whenever I do pinks and purples, I always like to do a green swatch just to see how it will turn out. Two is gray, three is a natural red, four is a soft black, and then four to 11 is a range that goes to platinum blonde, and then 12 is like a toned version of number 11. So I will start by taking the color directly from the container and I will apply it to the top of each swatch. And then some people do like to dilute their dyes, so I will do a diluted version at the bottom of each swatch. Please keep in mind that everyone's hair is different, which means everyone's hair will take color differently, plus different screens and monitors can make color just look quite different sometimes as well. So please just use my video as a reference for how this could possibly maybe turn out for you. So for the diluted section, the interesting thing about the Color Lux dye is that it's actually a conditioner. So you can use it over dry hair to get a more pigmented version of the color. But since it's a conditioner, it is actually meant to be used over wet hair. So I'm going to wet the bottom of each swatch and then just apply the color again directly from the container. And since this is meant to be used, you know, like kind of in the shower, in the bath type of environment, I'm actually just going to let it sit for the maximum recommended time, which is 25 minutes. So then I will rinse it out and when they're dry, I will meet you back here and we can do some comparisons. So whenever the dye that I'm doing covers some of the darker swatches, I do like to give a warning. Basically remind everyone my swatches are not virgin hair. So if your hair is virgin, especially with a color that's a little bit more muted and not as dark as this color, there's always a chance that it won't take to your hair because virgin hair is less porous than non-virgin hair. So it struggles to absorb semi-permanent color. And even if it does take, it could always like wash out really fast as well. And it does specify on the bottle that it's not supposed to dye darker hair so just be warned and as usual always do a strand test I feel like certain hair colors even though they're not natural they're almost considered like a variation of a natural hair color and rose gold is one of those where it's like you could probably get away with it in a workplace that's really strict or something and when a color is a little bit more smoky and muted I feel like it tends to have more of a natural vibe but maybe that's just me I don't know so one was green Unfortunately, while I do see a difference on the top, it's still got a lot of green coming through. So I would recommend if your hair is green before doing this to try and get it as light of green as possible. Um, and the color on top of the green did darken. It looks a little more warm in undertone, like it almost looks more peachy than it does on these swatches, but also darker. Two was originally the gray, and as usual, it is my most cool tone swatch. If you look at this swatch compared to all of the other ones, it definitely looks looks way more pink in undertone. It still has that soft smokiness, but I think because of the gray underneath, it looks even more smoky than maybe like the blonde swatch does, which is pretty on par. 
But yeah, biggest difference is that it looks a little more pinky and a little darker. Three was the natural red. And I do see a very, very subtle difference on the top. Again, this is one of those hair colors where the dye could maybe take your hair, could maybe not, depending on your hair texture. If you look at the six and seven, those don't look quite as warm on the top as the number three does. So I feel like this dye in particular kind of um, accentuates the red in the hair, makes it look a little bit more saturated, but still kind of in the natural red family. I don't really see a difference on the diluted section though. There might be a difference, but it's very hard to tell if there is one. Even though four was a soft black, I personally do not see a difference there. Five, six, and I think kind of seven. I do see like, a very 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 slight difference on the tops but it's so minimal that I truly don't think that it's worth trying this over your hair if it is in this family of depth it does change the undertone slightly I see a little bit more peachiness coming through but they all still look pretty brown it's not till you get to the number eight that you can actually really see it starting to look different than it did before and even on number eight I can actually see a difference on the bottom as well so there is kind of a jump between seven and eight because on seven I don't really see much of a difference on the diluted section and then with eight nine and ten they all look pretty similar to each other i'd say the color gets maybe a little bit more saturated as the hair gets lighter which obviously makes sense but overall like undertone and smokiness looks basically the same i would still aim to try and have lighter hair than darker hair but if your hair is not platinum blonde you'll probably get a pretty similar results if your hair is just like a lighter blonde or medium blonde to each other if that makes sense platinum blonde on the other hand is actually a little bit more cool toned not a lot more cool toned but it looks just a slight bit more pinky than these ones. These ones look slightly more peachy and it looks a little bit brighter as well. And then the number 12, which was the tone swatch, it has a similar outcome as to the gray swatch where it's kind of uh, a little more smoky looking and definitely more cool tone looking than the platinum blonde swatch. It looks a little bit more like mauve but it's not as cool tone as the gray swatch. The gray swatch looks mostly pink. This I can still see some more of the warmth from before, but I would say then it does look less rose gold so if you're going for more of a rose gold you probably don't need to worry about toning your hair but if you're going for kind of more smoky pink then you could try it out maybe so as for comparisons i thought i had a color like this in my collection but looking through all my photos and stuff i do not so my comparisons are not going to be exact which is kind of nice i do like adding new colors to my collection but if i did miss a color that you think would be similar feel free to let me know i can always post comparisons on my patreon for free so i decided to choose a more smoky comparison and a less smoky comparison so we can kind of see the differences so let's start with the less smoky comparison and that's gonna be Arctic Fox in the color Frosé all right this is comparable to number 12 11 10 and this is comparable to number 9 so most of my swatches that are supposed to be in the rose gold family are actually super warm compared to this. Um, so the Color Lux rose gold is a lot more pink compared to most of my rose gold is what I'm really trying to say. But then when you compare it to like pastel pinks, it looks quite warm. So I decided to go the more pastel pink route for my comparisons. Hopefully you can see just how smoky it is now compared to Frosé. Frosé almost looks neon in this light. It, I wouldn't call it a neon, but next to this color, it almost looks like it on the platinum blonde. I feel like when you look at these slightly darker swatches, the undertone isn't too far off. It's just that the rose gold is so smoky next door. But I will say the Frosé Rosé seems to be much, much better for lighter hair. While again, I'd still recommend the rose gold for lighter hair. It seems to have taken a little bit better than the Frosé. You could maybe even mix these together to get something a little bit more pigmented even, but not as smoky. Maybe that's something I'll do in the future. And then for my slightly more smoky comparison, I wanted to look at Uberlis in the color Dahlia. This is comparable to number 12, 11, 10, and nine so this one's obviously a lot more cool tone way more pink uh frosé was a lot more similar in undertone i would say but obviously a lot brighter whereas the soft pink dahlia is quite soft just like the rose gold but much much more pink and i wanted to show you just how warm the rose gold is compared to a pink 
but if you look at other rose golds this rose gold is more pink <laughs> if that makes sense i don't know hopefully it does but i will say they both look kind of similar in terms of saturation so try to have lighter hair but if it's not super platinum blonde you might be okay strand tests all that jazz but yeah the color lux rose gold pretty unique to my collection i don't have any like smoky corally salmony pinks all right now i'd like to look at our before and after clips those as well as everything after this point in the video is all going to be done in natural lighting. I hope my video helped. If you have a request, I do have a link below to a Google form you can fill out. Just remember, I only do brands that do not test on animals. Thank you so very, very much to my patrons and thank you for watching. And I hope to see you in my next video.